Okay, this is the second video in the series on reviewing for the common exam. And what we're going to do here is now apply what we learned in the document that was uploaded on ChemDoctor. And then the first video in this series that reviewed the properties of uh, pure, su uh, pure substances in terms of bonding, melting point, and so on. So let's go ahead and begin. So the question is, uh, we're going to look at the at the compound and then we're going to predict its properties. So this is silicon dioxide. Both of the silicon and the and the oxygen are non-metals and this happens to be one of your network solids. I'll just uh, abbreviate that this way. This is a network solid. The bonding is covalent. This substance is going to be very hard and it's not going to conduct. It's not going to conduct and it's going to have a really high melting point. Okay, next substance in line. Boom, boom, boom. So this is KCl. We have a metal that's paired with a non-metal. So it should be clear cut to you this is an ionic compound and there's going to be an ionic bond in it. Um, ionic bond. All right, it's, you, you, these ionic compounds are all crystalline solids at room temperature. Most of them are going to be white. They're, they're hard. They're brittle. You smash them with a hammer, they're going to break into pieces. Okay, and there's two ways that they can conduct. Or, or, or not conduct. All right, so the solid uh, does not conduct. These compounds only conduct in solution. Uh, conduct in solution. Okay, so I, I missed said that. They conduct in solution or they conduct melted. So let me put an A on this. Or they conduct when they're melted. Uh, so, so to be clear about that, shoot, let me fix that. Uh, we make this B right here. So they either conduct in solution, you, you dissolve them into water, now that solution is going to conduct electricity, or you have to melt the thing in order for it to conduct. The solid itself uh, does not conduct. All right, the next in line here is going to be copper. It's a period for metal, and the type of bond is going to be metallic. All right, the type of bond is metallic. Some would argue that it's covalent. Some would argue that it's somewhat ionic. It's, it's honestly a, probably a combination of both. This is going to be malleable. It's relatively hard. Like, you're going to have a hard time pressing using your fingernail and pressing an indentation in this but it's malleable it's ductile i mean that's why you know with um with with copper we can stretch that metal into wires and things like that um it's very conductive it's very conductive in both the uh, the uh both the solid and when it's melted and it has a relatively high melting point. KCl, coming back up here, this is a high melting point. I, I think I forgot to mention that. All right, now when we move to the CO2, this one is molecular. That should be obvious to you because, again, we have carbon, which is a nonmetal. We have oxygen, which is a nonmetal. This has covalent bonds in it. Uh, it has covalent bonds in it, and uh, the forces that hold it together, we're going to have to move this down, are going to be IMFs. Uh, it is going to be uh, not conductive, and it's going to have low melting point. Um, I'm going to skip these two. We're gonna, we'll add them to another page. All right, and 
Uh, okay, so moving on to this list. Okay, this compound, here's your polyanion ammonium. And then we have fluoride. So this compound is ionic. It has an ionic bond. Um, it's going to be hard, a uh, brittle substance. And it is going to conduct only when melted or two in the form of a solution. So this is conductivity. Conductivity. Melted or when it's in a solution. Um, and it's going to have a high melting point. I'm just going to abbreviate it. Okay, next compound. Carbon is a nonmetal, hydrogen's a nonmetal, oxygen's a nonmetal, hydrogen's an is also nonmetal. So this is a molecular substance. The forces that hold it together between particles are going to be IMFs. Um, it's going to be uh, soft. It's, in other words, it's not going to be hard and brittle. Um, it does not conduct. And it's going to have a low melting point because the forces that hold it together are weak. Next compound, barium is a metal. Sulfate is one of your polyanions. So this compound is ionic. It has an ionic bond. Uh, it's going to be a white uh, solid. So, so the, the ionic bond is strong, right? So that means this is going to be hard. It's also going to be brittle. All right, it's going to conduct two different ways, either in the form, uh, either in the melted format or in solution. So it's going to conduct as long as it's melted or in solution, and it's going to have a relatively high melting point. P4, this is a non-metal. So it is going to have a molecular uh, type of bonding. Uh, it's going to be soft. It's going to be non-conductive. And it's going to have a low melting point. All right, C18H18. This is actually octane. You should know that. All right, this is going to be molecular. Um, it's going to be soft. Whoops. In the solid form, it's going to be uh, soft material. It's going to be like a wax. Okay, it's going to be non conductive. And it's going to have a low melting point. Okay, so let's go to another sheet. First, let me go back here. I need to just review what I uh, crossed out here. Okay, diamond and ammonia. Diamond and ammonia. So let's go back and review that. So I'll put the diamond up here. And then we had ammonia and H3. All right, so let's finish this up. All right, this is elemental. It's a network solid. network solid. Um, it's going to be hard, uh, very hard. It's going to be non-conductive. And it's going to have a super high melting point. Whoops. It's going to have a super high melting point. All right. And I didn't say brittle here because diamond is so darn hard. You can whack it with a hammer all you want. I don't think you're going to be able to fracture it. So I guess the jury's out on whether the thing is brittle. I mean, maybe on some level it is if you could pressurize it high enough. But I honestly don't know the answer about the brittleness. All right, ammonia. This is molecular. The forces that hold it together are going to be IMF. These are weak. These are very weak forces. It's non-conductive. 
all right, and it has an extremely low melting point. Okay, so this is one way in which you will be asked, potentially asked questions on the common exam. With that, I'm going to go ahead and conclude the review.